I'm Wally Robinson, WNW News, on the Sears Radio Theater. That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a program of mystery with Vincent Price as your host. Here's a preview. I've given up everything for you. My husband, everything. Oh, come now. You and your husband had separated long before we ever met. You're taking this also matter of fact. You don't know what it is to love. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. What in the World Happened in May, brought to you by your local Navy recruiter. May is Admissions Day for South Carolina, admitted in 1788, Rhode Island in 1790, Wisconsin in 1840, and Minnesota admitted in 1858. In May of 1607, the first permanent English settlement in America was established at Jamestown. The U.S. Navy SEAL was adopted in May of 1780. The first Secretary of the Navy, Benjamin Stoddart, was appointed in May of 1798. In May of 1873, the post office issued its first penny postcard. The U.S. Navy Nurse Corps was established in May of 1908. One of the tallest buildings in the world, the Empire State Building, was completed in May of 1931. In May of 1934, the first quintuplets to live beyond infancy, the Dion quintuplets, were born in Canada. What in the World Happened in May is brought to you by your local Navy recruiter. We'll answer your questions about Navy opportunity. Or in the continental United States, call 800-841-8000, toll free. In Georgia, 800-342-5855. This is Vincent Price. The name Cordelia Botkin endures in the annals of crime, not only because the murders committed were unique in cruelty and ingenuity, but because her case brought forth a court decision which made People versus Botkin a leading case in the law pertaining to jurisdiction. The legal aspect we shall examine later. Let us now begin the story of Cordelia Botkin herself, a story of desperate love and unbridled passion. The year is 1895, on a beautiful, sunny afternoon in San Francisco. Seated on a bench in Golden Gate Park is Cordelia Botkin. She is close to 40, but she doesn't look that old. Indeed, she is appealingly attractive, with a full figure. Seated beside her is an older woman friend. A man about 30, wearing knickerbockers and a jaunty hat, rides a bicycle down a nearby slope. As he nears the women, the bicycle starts to wobble, and he almost runs into the women's bench. Oh, 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 I, oh. I'm sorry. Did I frighten you? You did indeed. I thought you were going to run right into us. Oh, something went wrong with the bicycle chain. My apologies to you both. Oh, it's quite all right. You're forgiven, Mr... Uh, Dunning. Uh, John Dunning. I'm in charge of the Associated Press offices here in San Francisco. A newspaper man. How interesting. Oh, uh, uh, this is my friend, Mrs. Cole. How do you do? And uh, you? Me? Yes. You haven't told me your name. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Cordelia Botkin. Cordelia. What a lovely name. Thank you. Do you remember what King Lear said of his daughter, Cordelia? <laughs> Recall it for me, please. He said... Her voice was ever soft, gentle, and low. An excellent thing in woman. How charming. You say it so beautifully. He stared deep into her eyes, and she stared deep into his. It was one of those moments that you read about. But in this case, it wasn't made up. It really happened. And if John Dunning had had one ounce of sense... He'd have tipped his hat, said how to do, and bicycled out of there. But if he had, nothing would have happened. And something, believe me, happened. <laughs> and that's only the beginning of our story. Sears Radio Theater. A new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, A Leading Case by Michael Raffetto. Our stars, Lureen Tuttle and Byron Kane. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value.
Mary had a little lamb. This is the actual voice, voice of Thomas Everywhere Edison. Everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Preserved just as it was recorded on his talking machine. When Sears decided to help preserve Edison's Fort Myers home, we used the Weather Beater, our best long-lasting tough exterior latex paint. This paint covers trim, doors, and siding in one coat when used as directed, and it helps protect against weather's worst. Sears Weather Beater, for great American homes like yours. This summer's hot item, cool t-shirt dresses. Now a Sears super value for only $14.99. How? Well, simple. It's a Sears special purchase, which means, though not reduced, it is an exceptional value. They're bright, solid dresses in v-necks, scoop-necks, and more. Of washable polyester and cotton knits in Mrs. Sizes. Choose your favorites now, while quantities last, because at $14.99, these t-shirt dresses won't stay at Sears long. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. I sell seashells by the seashore and buy my swimwear at a Sears store. Look beautiful by the sea or anywhere under the sun in swimwear from Sears. Sensational one and two piece styles in misses and junior sizes. Some in pulsating prints, others in sizzling solids. Colors that dazzle look terrific with a tan. Come on in. The fashion's fine in the sportswear department at Sears. All items available at most larger Sears retail stores. When we last saw our about-to-be lovers, they were gazing deep into one another's eyes. I made the comment then that John Dunning should have hightailed it away. He didn't. He followed the lady, and first thing you know, they're in her living room, drinking of the bubbly. <laughs> Will he rue the day, you might ask? I wouldn't doubt it. You're a charming hostess. Thank you. <laughs> Here, let me fill your glass. Good. You pour with a steady hand. Well, I'm a bartender at heart. Shall I put the bottle on the table here? Yes. That will be nice and handy because I'm going to sit beside you. There. <laughs> Isn't this cozy? I don't want that bottle to make a ring on your table. Oh, I hope it does. It will always be a reminder of our being together for the first time. Oh. Well, here's a... a, a... Yes. To us. I think you're sorry you came to see me. Well, why do you say that? I'm intuitive, where men are concerned. You're also very attractive. Oh, come now, Mr. Dunning. That was much too perfunctory for me to take it seriously. Mr. Dunning? Are we going all the way back to the beginning? Why so formal? Because I suspect there's something going on in the back of your mind. What is it? Intuition again? You have a nice smile. You ought to do it more often. When we met in the park, you seemed so self-assured and worldly. But actually, I believe you're quite shy. Am I right? Well... Oh, I didn't say that to embarrass you. I meant it as a compliment. It's charming. I like men who have a little boy streak... Here, let's have some more champagne. Will you pour, John? Glad to, Cordelia. Thank you. You know something? What? I think you're a little afraid of me. Are you? Why should I be? <laughs> I have a notion to kiss you. Forgive me for teasing you. <laughs> Don't be frightened. I'm not going to kiss you. I know you must be thinking I'm an awful clod sitting here like this, but... Well, what's been bothering me is that I haven't been honest with you. I'm sorry I didn't tell you before I accepted your invitation to come and see you, but... Well, you see, I'm married. There's more champagne here. I'll pour this time. Thank you. Do you love your wife? I... I guess so. Yes, I, I, I guess I do. But you're not sure. Is that what you're trying to say? I guess so. I'm quite sure... In my own case. Oh, you mean you're... So we're both married. We have that much in common. Maybe if we'd only admit it, we'd find we had a lot more in common. Oh, uh, shall we drop the subject of marriage? Let's do. Let's talk about us. Should we begin to think about going somewhere to eat? Oh, are you hungry? Not particularly. How about you? Well, I could fix us something here. Would you like that? Later. Uh, well, uh... That will give us time to really know each other. You almost gave me a kiss a while ago, and you didn't make good. 
I'm a man of my word. Which means? That I'm going to take you in my arms, like this, and kiss you, like this. <laughs> The passionate alliance between Mrs. Botkin and Dunning grew in intensity. Soon their affair was no longer a private one. They were seen together all over the city at restaurants, bars, the races at Ingleside Track, any place that held the promise of pleasure. Much of the money for these extravagances came from Cordelia's husband, Welcome Botkin. Now, that's not a made-up name, for he was, indeed, legally, Mr. Welcome A. Botkin. Strangely enough, Welcome sent money a couple of times a month to his errant wife. He couldn't, in good conscience, condemn her conduct, for he led an adulterous life himself in Stockton, California, where he chose to live most of the time. But what of Dunning's mate? A sad and different story. Mrs. Dunning was the daughter of a prominent family. Her father, an ex-congressman from the state of Delaware, presided over the family home at Dover. Mrs. Dunning, still young, attractive, the mother of a small daughter, was faced with a desperate situation. She must do something about her wayward husband. She knew that, but she hadn't yet decided what exactly to do. And all the while, he was slipping away from her. Sears National Automotive Sale. Get big national savings on the Sears Die Hard. Only $49.99 with trade-in. You save $8 on the maintenance-free battery that starts nearly every car at Indy. And save on Sears Dynaglass Belted 28 Tires. They're on sale now at 40% off spring 1979 general catalog prices. Plus federal excise tax. Dynaglass Belted 28 Tires. Save 40% at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop at Sears! Honey, I can't sleep. Maybe you should try counting sheets. You mean sheep? No, Nedley Sheets from Sears in so many great colors from light to dark. Rest easy knowing your bed looks fantastic because Medley Solids come in up to 24 colors like Indian Copper, Royal Blue, Lemon Yellow, and Jungle Green. But don't just count them. Mix and match them with Medley Pattern Sheets and Cases for a designer effect. Then dream in color tonight. Available at most larger Sears retail stores in the catalog. The bids are in for men's lightweight suits, and the offers from Sears show prices are down. Way down. What a time to buy during Sears Spring Suit Clearance. The prices are low, the value is high, and you can wear these handsome lightweight suits right now. Choose from vested suits, four-piece suits, and more. Not all styles and all sizes, so hurry in while quantities last. Sears Spring Suits for Men. Now a very good investment at most larger Sears retail stores. <laughs> While Mr. Dunning continued his passionate relationship with Cordelia Botkin, Mrs. Dunning fretted and worried and spent long evenings waiting for her wayward husband to come home. Just now, she sits in semi-darkness in the sitting room of the Dunning apartment. Presently, a key is quietly turned in the lock, thickening our plot. You don't need to tiptoe, John. I'm not asleep. Oh, I didn't see you. Why aren't you in bed? It's late. Yes, I know. Uh, uh, after I left the office, I dropped over to the press club for a nightcap. I got to talking to a couple of reporters, and before I knew it, it was late. I hope you weren't worried. If you expect a wife not to worry when she knows her husband is deceiving her. You mean you don't believe I've been at the press club? Please. Things have gone too far for us to delude ourselves any longer. I know where you've been. Where? With that... that woman. I won't call her by the name that comes to my lips. You might take offense since you're so devoted to her. Who told you I was with her? I hear of your escapades from all sides of late. I don't seek it. It pours in from friend and enemy alike, unsolicited. They're lying. No, they are not lying. I've tried to fool myself with the hope that that was the case. But today I found out for myself. Found out what? I saw the two of you. I stood in a doorway across the street from her apartment. But how... Wait! Before you involve yourself in lies. She lives at 645 Gary Street. 
I saw you go in there shortly after two o'clock this afternoon. I stayed at my post for two whole hours, wondering when you would come out, if at all. Finally, at four o'clock, the two of you emerged. She clung possessively to your arm. You patted her hand, leaned your head close to hers, and the two of you went down the street laughing, the very picture of two happy lovers. What you're saying is that you lowered yourself to spy on yes, me. Yes, I spied on you. I had to find out the truth for myself and for our little girl, your daughter, whom you pretend to love, who, who lies asleep in there innocently believing that, that her father has been absent so much of late because he's working so hard at his office. How long do you think I would lie to her now that I know the truth? No, I I'm taking her away before she learns that... that her father is an adulterer. Take her away? Where? To Dover. Back home to father. Cordelia? Is that you, darling? Yes. Oh, I didn't expect you, sir. What's the matter? I'm drunk. Oh, it should be obvious. Oh, come with me. Come on. Let go. Now, what are you trying to do? I want to take you to the bedroom so you can lie down. I don't want to lie down. All right. Sit here on the divan. That's it. Now, put your feet up and I'll take off your shoes. Oh, leave me alone, will you? Why are you being so hateful? Have you had another letter from your wife? That usually puts you in an ugly mood. Why are you bringing my wife into this? She's 3,000 miles away. Just leave my wife out of this. I got fired today. Are you serious? Were you really fired? I was booted right out. No notice, nothing. I quote, The Associated Press no longer requires your services as of this date. End of quote. Oh, darling. Oh, I got what was coming to me. I deserve to be fired. No such thing. You're talking nonsense. It's not nonsense. I deserved it, and everybody knows it, including you. I haven't been on the job. You know that. You think news stops coming in because a bum like me takes off and goes to the races? Or gets drunk with his mistress? Stop when he... it! I won't have you calling me that. What did I say that was so awful? Oh! Oh, oh, oh I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, honey. I, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. No, 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 no. Please, please, please. Don't, don't go away. Don't go away. Stay here close to me. You know how much you mean to me. How, how much I need you. Cordelia, darling, please, please don't be mad at me. I, I, I don't blame you. I don't deserve you. I don't deserve anybody. Send me away. Oh, no. Send me away. I, I, I've taken money from you. I've lived off of you. I'm... I, I, I'm, I'm just a bum. A derelict. A hopeless, no-good bum. There, there. Just be quiet. Nestle your head down on my breast. That's it. You have nothing to worry about. I'll take care of you, my darling. You're mine now. All of you. Sears Radio Theater will return after this message from your local station. Here's a tip from your Better Business Bureau. Is your car equipped to handle emergencies? Well, here's a list of essential items which will enable you to better handle an emergency situation. A car jack and lug wrench should always be carried in case of a flat tire. Be sure you know how the jack operates and the correct procedure for changing a tire. Flares and reflectors provide warning to other motorists that your car is stopped, and both are essential safety items. A toe strap or chain enables a car to be pulled out of the mud or the snow. Battery jumper cables help a motorist solve a dead battery problem quickly. A small fire extinguisher can prevent a small problem from turning into a large one. But you'd better keep it in the passenger compartment where you can get to it quickly. A first aid kit can come in handy in all sorts of minor medical emergencies. A tip from your Better Business Bureau.
two miles now. Sure wish I'd started this about 20 years ago. Take it easy, Pugsley. Hi, Mr. Kessler. Hello, kids. Say hello, Pugsley. Okay, about four more blocks and we're home. Time to sprint. Let's go, Pugsley. Over a year ago, Tom Kessler had a heart attack. He never misses his nightly run these days. But before his heart attack, the most exercise Tom got was pushing a pool cue. Regular exercise alone won't guarantee that you'll never have a heart attack, but it will increase your blood flow, relax you, make you feel better. Don't wait until you've had a heart attack to start exercising. See your doctor this week, and the two of you can come up with an exercise program that's right for you. For more information, contact your American Heart Association. We're fighting for your life. I'm out on the porch, daughter. Would you please come out here? All right. I'm coming, Father. Uh, this telegram just came for you. Thank you. It's from John. I hope it's not more bad news, my dear. No, n- not really. Actually, I guess it's it's good news. He says, my darling... Now, don't bother to read it aloud if it's upsetting to him. No, no, it's all right. I want you to hear it. My darling, the Associated Press has hired me back. Going to Cuba to cover Spanish-American War. Leaving San Francisco 22nd this month. Will you meet me in New York so we can have a few days together before I sail? Have completely severed all... Sorry. Have completely severed all relations here. Been a fool and beg forgiveness. I love you and only you. Please wire care of AP... Remember only this. I love you, John. Oh, Father, what should I do? Oh, here, here. Sit down, my dear. He's hurt me so. Indeed he has. He asked me to forgive him. Can I do that after all he's done? Do you still love him? That's what you must ask yourself. He's going away to a war... I guess he should have a chance to see his child. After all, she is his, and she does love him. And you, my dear? Do you still love him? Oh, Father, how many thousand times have I asked myself that? I lie in bed at night, and I think of the happy days we had together. I hear his calm, warm voice telling me how much he loves me. He's my husband again. But then the husband disappears, and I see only a tortured, dissolute face. If I agree to meet him, will it be the husband that I loved or or this this other person? Yes, yes, yes. But to refuse, even to talk to him, to see him, that seems so small, so spiteful. You want to see him, don't you? I'm almost ashamed to admit it, but... Yes, Father, I do want to see him. I, I guess I, I still love him. No matter what he's done, I'm afraid I still love him. Then go to him, my dear. He's your husband. This is my coach here, Cordelia. It's ridiculous when you come to think of it. What is? That we have to come all the way over to Oakland to get a train that goes east. But it was so beautiful on the bay coming across on the ferry boat. Didn't you think so, John? Dear? Yes. Yes. Is your wife meeting you at the station in New York? Or will she be at... at a hotel? No, she'll be at the station. She and our little daughter. How long will you be together? I, uh... I don't really know. I'm due to sail from New York on the 6th. This is the end for me, isn't it? You're never coming back to San Francisco, are you? With a war going on, who knows what's going to happen. But when it's over, the war, you'll be going back to your wife. That's what you're planning to do, isn't it? Cordelia, please, let's not make these last few minutes together unpleasant. I've given up everything for you. My husband, everything. Oh, come now. You and your husband had separated long before we ever met. You're taking this all so matter of fact. You don't know what it is to love. Cordelia, I'll never forget what you've meant to me and all that you've done for me. Believe me. Is there any hope that you'll come back to San Francisco? Look, I told you that with a war... Don't misunderstand. I wasn't asking you to promise to come back. 
I, I, I just... My dear Cordelia, the train's about to leave. Now, I've just got... Just one more thing. What I wanted to say was... Well, is there any hope of your coming back? Coming over on the ferry boat, you said the bay was so beautiful. And how much we always loved being on the bay. I remember you saying one time that San Francisco's bay was the absolute gem. That's the word you used. Gem. Better even than Naples, you said. That was the night we had lots of champagne and we were acting silly. And we made all sorts of plans to go to Naples and Venice. And you said... Why go to Naples when we had the very gem of them all right here? And then you call me your little gem and put your arms around me and kiss me. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm being silly. But you, you will miss San Francisco and the Bay and me, darling. Will you miss me? Boy! I've got to go. Goodbye. Goodbye, my darling. John's let her have good news for you. Oh, yes, Father. He thinks the war will soon be over. Actually, this letter is from Puerto Rico, and he's complaining that everything's so quiet he doesn't have anything to write about. I'm going to write him today and tell him that I'm praying he'll be kept in a quiet theater till it's all over, no matter how disappointing it might be to a war correspondent. Quite right, my dear, quite right. He thinks AP will want him in their New York office when the war is over. I hope so. I never want to go back to San Francisco again. And neither does he. Well, I should hope not. Well, incidentally, you haven't opened the package that I brought from the post office along with your letter. It's uh, blurred somewhat, but it looks like a San Francisco postmark. Here, I have my pocket knife. I'll open it for you. Oh, how sweet. A darling little handkerchief folded over these lovely chocolate bonbons. Look. Who's it from? It doesn't seem to be... Oh, wait. Here's a little note. It says, With love to yourself and baby, Mrs. C. Mrs. C? Someone you knew in San Francisco? I'm trying to remember. Hmm. For, th for the moment, I can't think who it could be. Here, we have a bonbon? <laughs> no, thanks. Sweets don't interest me anymore. Mmm. These are so good. Sister loves bonbons as much as I do. Excuse me, Father. Where are you going? In the house and share these with Sis. Within two days, Mrs. Dunning was dead. And the following day, her sister, Mrs. Joshua Dean, died of eating poison chocolates. Weeks after the deaths of Mrs. John Dunning and her sister in the state of Delaware on the night of August 23rd, 1898, Cordelia Botkin was arrested in a hotel suite in Stockton, California, where her husband was living. Don't bother, Mrs. Ruth. I'll answer it. Cordelia Botkin? Yes. What is the meaning of this rude intrusion? My name is Gall, Mrs. Botkin. I'm the police chief here in Stockton. This is Officer Gibson of the San Francisco Police. Close the door, Gib. I hold here in my hand warrants for your arrest. You'll have to come with us. And what if I refuse to come along? You can't refuse, ma'am. These warrants empower us to take you into custody. I don't believe you, since I'm guilty of nothing. You're entitled to have the charge read if that's what you want. I most certainly do. Read. The people of the state of California to any sheriff, constable, marshal, or policeman of said state or of the city and county of San Francisco. Information on oath having been this day laid before me that the crime of murder has been committed in that Mrs. John P. Dunning, a human being of the city of Dover, County of Kent, state of Delaware, was willfully, unlawfully, feloniously, and with malice aforethought killed and murdered and accusing Cordelia Brown Botkin thereof. That's you enough. How ridiculous. 
I've never been in the state of Delaware. In my whole life, I've never been in Delaware. Nevertheless, you'll have to come with us. Now, don't make us use force. Do you expect me to go out in this attire? Well, how long will it take you to get ready? Well, that will depend on Mrs. Ruth, my tire woman, <laughs> my maid. I'll be ready for you when I've made my toilette. I am Judge Carol Cook. The trial of Cordelia Botkin began in the Superior Court of San Francisco December 6th, 1898. The prosecution put on an impressive array of witnesses. The doctor who attended Mrs. Dunning and her sister in their final agony of pain before they died of arsenic poisoning. Mr. Pennington, the father of the dead women. A chemist. On and on they came, 15 witnesses in all from the state of Delaware. There followed a parade of witnesses from San Francisco. One such was a Frank Gray. Now, Mr. Gray, let's get back to that book you hold in your hands. You testified, did you not, that it's known as the poison book at Owl Drugs where you're employed as a clerk. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Owl Drugs on Market Street here in the city. Very good. Now, tell us what purpose such a book serves. Well, you see, whenever we sell poison, we always enter the amount, the date, the name of the purchaser, and, well, uh, the reason for buying the poison. All that information we have to put in writing in, in the poison book. Yes. Now, Mr. Gray, will you please open the said book to the entry under the date of June 1st, 1898? Yes, sir. Have you found the entry? Yes, sir. The handwritten entry of June 1st, 1898, correct? Yes, sir. Do you recognize the handwriting? That is, can you identify it? Yes, sir, it's my handwriting. Now, would you please read what you wrote? Well, uh, first I wrote down the date, uh, June... Exactly, Mr. Gray. Just read us what you wrote. June 1st, 1898, 2 p.m. Mrs. Botkin, California and Hyde. Arsenic, two ounces, bleaching... Gray. Explain each entry, if you please, starting with Mrs. Bodkin. Why did you write down that name? Well, she was the purchaser. Well, yes, the... we'll get to that. The point is that you always enter the purchaser's name. Whenever poison is bought, yes, sir. The next entry, please. California and Hyde. That's the address she gave. The next entry? Arsenic, two ounces. Uh, that's what the woman bought, uh, two ounces of lump arsenic. The woman who gave you the name of Mrs. Bodkin. Yes, sir. And uh, what follows the arsenic entry? The word bleaching. That's what the lady said she wanted the arsenic for, bleaching. Bleaching a, a straw hat, she said. But we have to put down a reason for the purchase of poison, and that's, that's the reason she gave. Did you recommend that she buy arsenic for that purpose? No, sir. I told her we had a much better bleach when it wasn't dangerous. You told the purchaser that? Yes, sir. But she insisted on the arsenic, so uh, I sold it to her. I see. And the final entry? My name, Gray. Hmm, very good. Now let's go back to the name Mrs. Bodkin. Would you recognize the person who gave you that name if you saw her? Yes, sir. Is she present in this courtroom? Yes, sir. It's that woman sitting at the table right there, the defendant. Thank you, Mr. Gray. Defense may cross-examine... Now, Mr. Gray, is it unusual for you to sell poison? Well, no, I, I wouldn't say it was unusual. As a matter of fact, you sell poison for one purpose or another quite often, do you not? Well, that's hard to say. It, it depends on what you mean by quite often. There's nothing unlawful about the sale or purchase of arsenic. That's correct, is it not? Well, no, it, it's it's not unlawful, but... Uh... Just answer my question, yes or no. Is it unlawful? No, sir. So, if a person comes into your drugstore and purchases arsenic, there is no reason for you to think of it as being an unusual or remarkable occurrence, eh, Mr. Gray? No, I guess not, un unless... These are I... simple questions. Don't give us complicated answers to them. Now... In the last six months, you've made a good many sales of arsenic, have you not? Well, I, I, I don't know that I've made a good many. Would you say you've made several? Several, I guess. Uh, mm, yes, uh, sir. Of those sales, you have a distinct recollection of the transaction involving a Mrs. Botkin, 
whom you have identified as the defendant here. Yes, sir. That was on June 1st, some six months ago, right? Yes, sir. You have a good memory. Now, can you give us the name of some other purchaser of poison five or six months ago? Three months ago? Oh, no, sir. Not right offhand. Your Honor, I object to this line of questioning. The witness used the poison book to refresh his memory regarding the sale to Mrs. Botkin. He's made no claim to having a remarkable memory. To pursue this within the scope of legitimate cross-examination, I submit that the witness be allowed to refer to the poison book, assuming that counsel's question was even relevant in the first place. And I base a further objection on the ground that it was not. I'll put another question to the witness, Your Honor. Isn't it a fact, Mr. Gray, that you had no recollection of this June 1st transaction until it was called to your attention by the police, and that you had no idea of what the purchaser looked like until you were brought to the San Francisco jail before the trial to have a look at the defendant? I object, Your Honor, on the ground... Oh, just a moment. Now, do you deny that this witness was brought to the jail and that Mrs. Botkin was pointed out to Your him? Honor, it... Gentlemen, gentlemen... Your question, Mr. Barton, is a proper one, if you will address it to the witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Gray, before this trial started, were you taken to the jail where Mrs. Botkin was pointed out to you? Yes, sir. Well, I think that's no further questions. <laughs> bedspread with all the muscle to resist the wear and tear it gets from high-spirited kids. It's Tough Cord, a sturdy blend of 75% polyester and 25% rayon. Choose from bunk twin and full sizes in 10 bright solid colors or five coordinating plaids. All machine washable and permapressed for no fuss easy care. When you want value in a strong and sturdy bedspread, look for Tough Cord because kids not only sleep in their bedrooms, they play there too. At most Sears retail stores. Sears National Automotive Sale. Get big national savings on the Sears Die Hard. Only $49.99 with trade-in. You save $8 on the maintenance-free battery that starts nearly every car at Indy. And save on Sears Dynaglass Belted 28 Tires. They're on sale now at 40% off spring 1979 general catalog prices. Plus federal excise tax. Dynaglass Belted 28 Tires. Save 40% at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop at Sears! Oh, here I go again. It's time to rent one of those steam-type carpet cleaners. Why rent? Now Sears puts power in a carpet cleaner you can own yourself. The power spray from Sears for easy home carpet cleaning. Power spray sprays hot water into your carpet, then sucks up the dirty water. You can see the dirt you get out. Dirt you didn't even know was there. The Power Spray Carpet Cleaner, a convenient carpet cleaner you can own yourself. Available at most Sears retail stores. Kenmore. <coughs> Solid as Sears. Vincent Price again, and here's the concluding act of a leading case. The trial goes on through the cold December days. The spectators lean forward expectantly as John Dunning takes the witness stand to give testimony against his former mistress, Cordelia Botkin. She is wearing a black suit to which is pinned a wilting bunch of violets she was permitted to purchase on her way to the courtroom. The district attorney continued with his examination. Now then, let's go back, Mr. Dunning, to the time you last saw the defendant here. That is the last time you saw her before this trial began. When was that? The day I left for the east on my way to Cuba. She went with me to the train station. Mm. You were leaving San Francisco to take up your duties as a war correspondent for the Associated Press, is that correct? Yes, sir. Where was your wife at this time? At her parents' home in Dover, Delaware. Up to the time of this parting, how long had you known the defendant? I can't say exactly, but uh, quite a long time. Well, would you say some months or... Yes, yes, a good many months. A couple of years or so. Describe your relationship... Was it purely friendly, casual, or uh, otherwise? It was mostly otherwise. <laughs> Tell us what you mean by otherwise. Sexual. Ah. And this uh, meretricious relationship with the defendant went on for a long period of time? Yes, sir. And came to an end when you left for the East in Cuba? That's correct. 
Did it come to an end by mutual consent? No, sir. I ended it. Did Mrs. Botkin ever... No, no, strike that. You say you ended it. Did Mrs. Botkin try to dissuade you from ending it? Yes, sir. You wanted to put an end to the relationship. For what reason? I'd made up my mind to go back to my wife, if she would have me. Did you tell the defendant here that you were going back to your wife? I told her that I was going to meet with my wife when I arrived in the East. How does she take this news? She was extremely upset. Did she try to dissuade you? Yes. In what way? I would say in just about every way possible. Thank you, Mr. Dunning. You may cross-examine. I have no questions to put to this witness, Your Honor. Very well. You may step down, Mr. Dunning. Uh, for the present, uh, Your Honor, the prosecution has no further witnesses. Then you may proceed for the defense, Mr. Knight. Your Honor, I move for a dismissal of this case. Hmm? On what grounds? On the grounds that a court in the state of California has no jurisdiction to try a case such as this. And further, that the want of jurisdiction has not been remedied by any of the evidence adduced by the prosecution. Your Honor, I submit this is simply a ruse on the part of the defense to prejudice the jury. <coughs> and I think the court should make it clear that the purpose of this trial is to hear evidence and not whimsy. Is the common law on which our own jurisprudence is founded whimsy? Was the Supreme Court of North Carolina being whimsical when it held in the case of State versus Hall, 114 NC 909, that a murder is committed where the shot took effect, to wit, in Tennessee, where the victim was killed, and not across the border in North Carolina where the killer stood when he fired the fatal shot? Have we not an analogous situation here? This defendant, Mrs. Botkin here, is being tried for murder in the state of California. But her alleged victims died some 3,000 miles away in the state of Delaware, a state in which the defendant has never set foot. If the court please, is not the law properly stated in State versus Hall where it says the murder is committed where the shot took effect? Yes, but I should remind counsel that there is an element he has neglected to mention in his argument. And that is the unquestioned power of a state legislature to alter or amend our laws. There is a section in the California Penal Code that is applicable to the situation that exists in this case. I have the Penal Code before me, and I have just turned to section 27. It reads as follows, quote, The following persons are liable to punishment under the laws of the state. One, all persons who commit in whole or in part any crime within this state. End of quotation. Now, the preparing of poison candy in California and the sending it to Delaware with a murderous intent constituted an attempt to commit murder which in itself is a crime even if no death resulted. So, part of the crime was committed in California thereby giving the California court the right to try, which is to say, the jurisdiction to try such a defendant for the whole crime. Such being the case, the motion to dismiss this case for want of jurisdiction is hereby denied. <laughs> Cordelia Botkin was found guilty of murder in the first degree. I sentenced her to life imprisonment. When she died in San Quentin prison in 19 and 10, the newspapers took little note of her death, which was attributed to, quote, softening of the brain, unquote. Cordelia Botkin, a forgotten name, except in the annals of jurisprudence, where it will always endure. How long do your pantyhose last? Do you want the answer in minutes or hours? You should try Sears and Durables. The pantyhose that lasted an average of 18 days of normal wear in a test with 400 women. The women in our test wore in Durables day after day after day and as a group averaged 18 days. A patented process makes them strong so they last. And sheer, so they look great. No pantyhose last forever. How long do your pantyhose last? In Durables, at larger Sears retail stores. 
the bids are in for men's lightweight suits, and the offers from Sears show prices are down. Way down. What a time to buy during Sears Spring Suit Clearance. The prices are low, the value is high, and you can wear these handsome lightweight suits right now. Choose from vested suits, four-piece suits, and more. Not all styles and all sizes, so hurry in while quantities last. Sears Spring Suits for Men. Now a very good investment. I'm on my feet most of the day, and when my workload gets me going, one thing I can depend on for comfort is my die-hard work shoes from Sears. We've sold thousands of pairs of Sears Best Die Hard Work Shoes. They're designed for men who want a comfortable fit as well as a ruggedly constructed shoe. Our Die Hard Work Shoe is cushioned from heel to toe, plus the sole is warranted. If the sole wears out in one year, return pair and we'll replace it free of charge. Die Hard Work Shoes, as tough and dependable as their name. Available at most larger Sears retail stores. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. A leading case was written by Michael Raffetto, produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. Your host was Vincent Price. Our stars were Lorene Tuttle and Byron Kane. Featured in the cast were Ann Given, Stan Waxman, Stephen Roberts, True Boardman, Herb Rudley, and Marvin Miller. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. How long ago did you read Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's great Sherlock Holmes story, The Hound of the Baskervilles? Or Robert Louis Stevenson's masterpiece of the macabre, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? Perhaps recently, perhaps many years ago. Well, these two greats of literature are among the dozens of classic stories you'll hear in the weeks to come on CBS Radio Mystery Theater over most of these stations. I'm E.G. Marshall your host for this award-winning radio series. Every Saturday and Sunday, we devote our drama to a tale of suspense by a world-famous author. You'll be hearing stories by Edgar Allan Poe, Emily and Charlotte Bronte, and special radio adaptations of plays by William Shakespeare. Every weekday, of course, we'll continue to present original tales of the supernatural and macabre. So listen here for CBS Radio Mystery Theater on most of these CBS Radio Network stations. New York, Chicago, St. Louis, Miami, Seattle. Our biggest cities are sending out cries for more VISTA volunteers. VISTA means volunteers in service to America. VISTA volunteers work with groups of inner city residents to tackle the many urban problems that can't be solved alone. By working together with local leaders, entire neighborhoods can be restored. Job training centers can be created. Educational programs, health and legal services can be expanded to reach all who need them. VISTA means working through the democratic process to better our cities. Community people are learning that they can have a voice in making the decisions that affect their lives. VISTA volunteers come from all backgrounds. Many come from the neighborhoods they work in. They all share one conviction, that self-reliant, self-confident, caring individuals can make a difference in a community. America needs more VISTA volunteers. Put yourself where you're needed. Call 800-424-8580 or write VISTA, Washington, D.C., 20525, a public service of this station and action. Tomorrow's Sears Radio Theater will be a story of love and hate with Cicely Tyson as your hostess. Let's listen. Do you really think they'll march? There must be a dozen posters in the law school quad alone saying they will. Did you see that notice saying that a committee is meeting to stop them? Yeah. Do you think I should join? If you want to. Are you? No. So be sure and tune in tomorrow to the Sears Radio Theater.